This episode of In an Instant is powered by Wasabi. Get 15% off camera batteries with promo code INSTANT. Welcome to In an Instant, my name is Ben. This is the Instant Lounge, and today we are doing a little Q&A session with you lovely viewers where we get to talk about all kinds of topics in one video, which is one of my favorite things to do. It's really fun, sort of a speed round. And uh, without further ado, let's just start answering some of these. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. All right, why don't we go ahead and dig in here. There are a lot of questions. Um, many more were submitted. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted these questions. Um, I tried to compile a list as best I could. Why don't we dig in? So the first question is from Trevor K on YouTube who asks, if you had to choose the SLR 680 or the SX70, which one? Well, I think from like a practical level, the SLR 680 is a little bit better of a camera because it has the onboard flash, which I do find useful in certain situations. I don't usually use flash, but if I'm going to like a party or something, I can always bring the SLR 680. I don't have to worry about bringing like a mint flash bar to accessorize the SX70. Um, I do really love SX70 film, so having both is nice, but I know that most people cannot do that. So I would recommend the SLR 680 shooting 600 film for a little bit more of a practical daily user. GNC on YouTube asks, do you think that celebrities are ruining film photography culture or contributing to it? This is a really interesting question I hadn't thought too hard about before, but what he's referencing is that when a celebrity suddenly is photographed holding a camera, the prices skyrocket on eBay. And that is annoying to some people. Um, I know the contacts community absolutely must hate that. Um, I think it's a good thing. Um, and the reason why is because I think it gets more people shooting film. I mean, that's the bottom line. Um, maybe everyone who loves a certain celebrity's camera isn't gonna buy that camera. More likely they're gonna say, oh, what's a cheaper option I can find? Maybe I can dig out grandma's camera or my dad's point and shoot from the 80s. And so I think that's a very good thing. The more people who shoot film, the better it is for the industry. Um, as for how it affects the culture, um, I think it's good to have more voices in the culture. I think the more people that are shooting film right now is better for the culture. Um, sure, it might segment it into certain like pop photography that move away a little bit from our little tight knit thing we got going here, but I, I don't think that's a problem. It's better for the industry if more people are shooting. IMCBR on Instagram asks, if you could only use one camera for the rest of your life, which would you choose? This answer has evolved over time, but I'm pretty sure that I've landed on the Mamiya RB67. It's a massive camera. It's not convenient for most situations, but the fact is it can shoot like every format that I like. It can shoot peel apart film. It can shoot uh, obviously medium format film, which I shoot all the time. Uh, it can shoot Polaroid Integral film with accessories that you can get on eBay. Uh, eBay user Aaron Smith, um, he has an incredible array of accessories, including a Polaroid Integral back for the RB67. You can shoot 35 millimeter film on it, like you saw in a recent video. It's just sort of the catch-all camera, and the lenses are unbelievable for it. So I think if, if like, I had to be cut off today from ever acquiring another camera, I would just probably stick with the RB. Right Angle on Instagram asks, which film might be on the chopping block next? Um, I think besides Fuji's, uh, Instax line, every other Fuji film is on the chopping block. I think for the most part, we're in an area of expansion, thankfully, where every company is trying to introduce new stocks like Kodak, Orvo, um, Lomography. Uh, a lot of these smaller companies are now introducing new black and white stocks. People are working on color stocks. It's a great time to be shooting film, but Fuji is obviously pulling out of the business, especially in the uh, professional lines of film and their consumer films. So I think those are the next to go. I really wouldn't love to see Superior disappear, but I, they're definitely just discontinuing film. I mean, it is what it is. Instax is doing great for them. They don't give a hoot about our celluloid otherwise. Dan Rayner Photography on Instagram asks, how do you organize your presumably massive collection of Polaroids and negatives? Uh, it is a huge challenge, I must say. Um, I 
started off by doing sort of a binder thing. I designed my own binders and I really liked the look of the binders and they were really fun to bring out at parties and show everyone the Polaroids and really bother everybody by doing that. Um, but it became too much. There became too many Polaroids to fit in the binders and I started falling behind. So I've started this box system, which is kind of ridiculous, but it's really funny. It fits under the couch and it makes it a little bit less stressful. After I scan, I can just put in a box and just like write with the date on it. And that's helping me a lot with organizing my Polaroids. My negatives, I sort of do by year. I just sleeve them after I scan them. And that's not a great system, but it's all I can do. I mean, I only have so much time in the day. That's the thing. Um, oftentimes organization is one of the things that falls by the wayside for a lot of people. I try not to let that happen, but I've got sort of a system down. Uh, I think I can find anything I wanna find if I need to find it. And I think that's probably the most important aspect of it. Christian H. Salakath on YouTube asks, do you ever feel limited by the instant photography niche on your channel? I wouldn't mind more 35 millimeter or medium format videos if that's what gets you excited these days. This is a phenomenal question. A few people asked about this. Um, I think that in the concept of the channel in an instant, um, obviously Polaroid is the focus. It will always remain the heart of the channel for sure. But there's no doubt that after two years of producing videos like every other week. Um, it's not that the content's running dry with instant photography. There's never gonna be an end to what we can do with Polaroids here on this channel, and that will never go away. But um, I do wanna follow my heart too, and just the things I'm enthusiastic about at the time. And over the last two years, there's been some times where I'm like, damn, I would really love to make a video about this camera that I'm loving lately, but it shoots 35 millimeter. I'm not really sure if that would be good on the channel. And I've kind of avoided that for years. And recently I've been like, ah, maybe I'll make a video about the Sprocket Rocket. What's the worst that could happen? I'll throw some pull rate in the video and, and we'll mix it up a little bit. And I hope that viewers like that. I can only do what I love and if, I don't do that on this channel. It's not gonna be very fun to watch. So there may be a little bit more diverse content going forward, but uh, the heart of the channel will always be Polaroid. You don't have to worry about that. Shutter Slaps on Instagram asks, favorite photographic experience so far? This is just the answer to this. Um, in 2017, I shot an entire season uh, with basically one team in a professional football league. And so I got to know the players really well. I was like part of the family. Um, I, I was in the locker room. I was there with them pregame at practices. I was really ingrained in this team. And it just so happened that the team made it to the championship that year. And they won the championship game. And so this, this family that I was in is now celebrating having the time of their lives in this locker room, dousing each other with champagne, pouring it onto my head. I felt like I was part of the experience. You know, the team really brought me in as one of their own. And I was at the parade and they like gave me a special presentation. It was, it was one of the most amazing experiences of my life, let alone photographic or otherwise. So that will always sort of be a peak for me. I was a fan of that football league my entire life and then I had finally gotten to experience that joy and thrill and uh, I won't soon forget it. I won't ever forget it. I'm just gonna die having not forgotten it. Maxima Thomas on YouTube asks, what are your thoughts on the Polaroid Go one year on from its release? Has it been a fun and innovative addition in the instant film family or nothing more than a gimmick that doesn't stand the test of time? I think this answer remains to be seen even now. We're a year gone, but Polaroid is a private company. Um, obviously I talk to people in the company, but I'm never like prying them on sales. <laughs> so I don't really know how the Polaroid Go has done financially for them. I really hope it's done well. Um, I know why they released it. I know what it means for the market. They had to make something that could compete with Instax Mini, which is by far the most popular film stock of any kind. And so I think that it's an important product for them. Um, I don't know whether it has done incredibly well over the last year, but I think they're gonna keep it on the shelves. I think they're gonna keep releasing new colors and new models and maybe new film frames and stuff like that, because I think it's an important thing that they need to have out there. Um, the Polaroid community, whether or not they've really taken it in as one of their own, that is debatable, but uh, I think from a mass product sense, it's, it's an important thing. Hopefully it's done well. Peter Fortin on Instagram asks, what do you think makes a good photographer? Been having a lot of self-doubt lately. This is a very, very complicated sort of question. A lot of people go through the self-doubt thing. Everybody goes through it. It's part of being alive. It's part of being a human being. And that's very natural, um, especially when you're making art. 
it, it, doubt is a major part of the process. And I don't think you should be worried that you're having doubts. I think it's a good thing. I think it, it's, it, you're just checking yourself and reassessing sort of what is making you happy in your art. And I think for me, what makes a good photographer is somebody who is willing to work through those doubts and find what it is that they love shooting and figure out a way to shoot that consistently. I think what, what I really appreciate in a photographer is consistency. And I know that sounds a little bit weird because I shoot a bunch of different stuff. My, my work often looks completely different because I'm shooting on all these different formats and going all these different places. But I still think at, at its core, there's something that I love and there's a couple of things that I shoot the most and I wanna make sure that I'm exploring that in a unique way that is true to myself. And as long as a photographer is being true to themselves, I think that's what makes a good photographer. Good is obviously subjective. I'm not talking in terms of whether the photographs would be great in a gallery or anything like that, or whether it would be commercially good photography, whatever that really means. But um, I think on a personal level for an enthusiast, uh, being a good photographer is just being true to themselves and, and really just finding their thing and sticking to it and exploring it as much as they can and then maybe moving on to the next thing and getting really good at that. From a professional level, being a good photographer means you nail the shot and you make the client happy. Um, I think any pros that are with me right now knows exactly what that means. It's, it, it can be a little bit uh, dry sometimes and sometimes it's extremely exciting and the client lets you run with it and you can bring your own passions into the jobs. Um, but so there's a couple definitions of that. Hopefully that answers that question, but don't worry about the self-doubt. Not just pale Polaroids again on Instagram asks, why is Ben so sexy? Please, don't, you don't have to say that, but thanks for saying it. Julio Sosa on Instagram asks, I tell myself I'm archiving my life. Is it possible that I'm just hoarding memories? Very interesting philosophical idea here, hoarding memories. I think many of us are doing that with how they photograph everything and scan it all and put it in a folder or print and, and make their own little books. There is a hoarding aspect to photography for sure. We all hoard cameras, we all hoard our photos. I think I've been tried to be really good about sharing my photos with the people who were with me when I had experiences. That was a terrible sentence. Uh, what I'm meaning to say is that, let's say I go on a trip or I hang out with a bunch of people, I take a bunch of photos, I make sure that I'm sharing those photos with them. I actually got back on Flickr which is a Stone Age relic for a lot of people, but I found Flickr to actually be a great place to make albums just for one day or one trip or one scanning session, upload everything, all the finals into that folder, and then share it with my friends and family. It, it's been a really nice way to share the photos. They get the high res photos, they can download them, download them off of Flickr. Um, I find that that's a good way not to just be hoarding your own photos and actually share them with people because that's like the whole point in some ways. Like you're having a great experience, you're capturing it, and then you want them to be able to reflect on that through your photos. And I found that Flickr's actually great for that. I've been having a great time sharing that in that way, much better than Instagram, for example, which I look at as more of like a portfolio. Albert Cardenas on YouTube asks, in your humble opinion, Mr. Instant, is it worth getting your hands on a few dead cameras until the day their respective film format is revived or until accessible modifications can be done to have them accept other alternatives like Instax? Um, I'd say if you're a creative person and you really like messing around with old cameras that are have discontinued formats, it can be really fun to shoot other formats in those cameras. As an example of something I'm literally doing right now, um, I got a Yashica 44, which is a 127 camera. 127 film is similar to medium format and then it's a roll film, but it's much smaller, it's more like the width of 35 millimeter film. And so I shot a few rolls of 127 in there, which is not a dead format, but it's being like specially cut and it's kind of hard to get, it's a little bit expensive. And so I was like, okay, why don't I try to convert this camera into a 35 millimeter sprocket shooter? And I've been shooting that over the last couple of days and having a blast. So I'd say I wouldn't just buy all these dead cameras up with no plan, but if you do want to get creative, there's a lot of ways you can revive dead cameras. A lot of fun methods you can use and uh, I highly recommend it. It's really fun and, and it's really rewarding to use cameras that are otherwise sort of shut down for their lives and bringing them back, sort of feeling like a, like a god. 
All right, that's it. And thank you for watching in an instant. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more views, Q and A videos, lounge sessions, tips, guides, and all things instant.